All right. So I hope everyone is ready to re- listen. Uh, you have noticed probably that we are actually in the part of our module in we in which we actually leveled up, diba? So for today, especially for the entire finals, uh, we will be talking on what we call the Arduino level 2 in of course in our subject introduction to robotics. So the Arduino level 2 is actually all about the robot control, robot control and display. I'll be introducing some sensors in the latter part. Okay? So para at least matuto tayo ng mga sensors and this is actually will serve as the the best foundation for your inquiry subject. Okay? Now, for this particular module, especially for module 5, we I have prepared here like eight or should I say seven different lessons, okay? So we have here like the basics on how to use the soldering iron, those soldering wires, the RB, RGB modules, and the way how we mix them. And I'll be introducing the first sensor the meron tayo, which is the PIR sensor and the four digital tube. So you you may download, you can start download or you may want to download your module number five in our canvas for you to have uh, a guide, especially while especially ito, during our discussion. Okay? So, let's talk about the the first part of our module. After complete, completing this module, a student should be able to construct robotics projects with different input and output devices using sensors and motors controlled and programmed in an Arduino microcontroller. So, uh, let me just remind everybody that every time we want to create or uh, create a schematics or an Arduino sketch, you have to observe, you know, the the proper workplace safety. Especially if you are planning to to use a physical kit, always remember and make sure that your hands are dry. Use gloves if necessary. Make sure your working area is clean. No liquid materials or drinks. No conductible material n- near work area. And make sure the first aid kit is placed. Now. Uh, I am fully aware that some of you or majority of you as well do not have the Arduino physical kits with you. That's why every Friday then, especially ito, itong Friday, if you want to use those, those Arduino kits, the physical Arduino kits, uh, just tell me. Uh, nakita to ng mga, I think, ICTB, no? Nakita nila na nandun lang, pero wala pang gumamit as of the moment. Pero yeah, uh, if you want to do your project, your physical project, you may want to uh, borrow the physical Arduino kits during your animation class every Fridays. So, pwede-pwede nyo namang hiramin yun kasi doon din ako nag-office animation studio natin. Ba? Now, uh, for the first lesson in module number 5, we will actually be talking about the soldering iron and other basic electronic tools. Although, uh, just for your information, nangyayari to in, in physical environment. Although, for the sake of this online synchronous classes, hindi natin to magagawa. For the sake of this classes lang, uh, gagawin natin like more on discussion lang. Okay? So, my target here is, of course, to enumerate the use and functions of the soldering irons. Now, let's try to guess the word here. Ito nakikita natin, no? Ano ba tong mga... Ito, ano tong FE na to? <laughs> Ano rin to? It's, it's actually easy. This one, this is bind. Alright? This is bind. And this is bind. And this is soldering iron. That's actually the, the main concept. Okay? Or the main topic that we will have for the lesson one. And soldering iron and bind. Have you tried using this one in, in the physical environment? I have tried using this one because this is actually the the start. Ito yung parang pinaka-classic way namin ng robotics dati. Nag-solder kami. But yan, good. Uh, Mark, si Mark, oh, na-try niya na, di ba? Maganda gamitin, no? Pero, ano lang, uh, medyo delikado lang kapag hindi ka marunong. Yan, si Mark, si Hilton, <laughs> even si Craig, ayaw niya rin daw gam- ayaw gamitin. <laughs> Nung, ano, di ba? Although, hindi tayo gagamit yan today, syempre. Now, let's try to familiarize ourselves with the basic electronic tools. So, how does a soldering iron join pieces of metal together? What materials is used in fastening wires together? And what materials is used to remove soldered materials and give at least three precautionary measures in handling the soldering iron? Now, 
Uh, in this case, when we say solder kasi, it came from the Latin word solidare, which, of course, which means to make solid. This means it's the way on how we assemble any electronic component or electronic project, and one must learn the skill of soldering. Soldering happens when two or more metal items are joined together to form an electrical connection by melting a filler metal with a relatively low melting point. The materials essential for soldering are soldering iron, solder, solder wire, and the flux or the solder paste that we call it. Okay, so ang soldering iron, ha- ang soldering iron kasi, it's actually a hand tool, okay, used in soldering. This simply answers the questions that I have, you know, asked earlier. These are hand tools that is used in soldering. It supplies the heat to melt a lead and solder a wire to make an electronical or electrical connection. And the soldering lead, ito, it's a type of metal wire with a low melting point, low enough to be melted. With a soldering iron. We also have the desoldering pump, also known as a solder sucker. Ito naman yung pangtanggal. It's actually used to remove the soldered materials or electrical components from a circuit board for troubleshooting, repair, and re- replacement. Yeah, uh, when I was like a high school student, we actually started with the computer building, the, the compu- basic computer setup dati, uh, in which we have to solder the parts ng mga ng motherboard, for example. Ngayon kasi hindi na eh, di ba? Like, if you are planning to build your own computer or your own PC, everything is provided na. Everything is being soldered. Unlike before, isa-isa mo siyang ikakabit lahat. And, nung abutan ko rin kasi, uh, nung time din namin, abutan ko rin yung, yung sa may robotics namin. Yung mga M-Bots, pero hindi pa M-Bot ang tawag dun eh mga robotic arms we will be we are soldering them one by one by one so if you will be asking me ano ang mas maganda syempre mas maganda ngayon <laughs> kasi lahat is provided na di ba uh, uh, tawag dito mas safe na rin and at the same time mas efficient na siya although it it's a must it's actually a skill as i have mentioned earlier it's a skill to have like a knowledge or a background or you know, an idea on how to use soldering irons. Uh, up, up until this moment, up, up to this point, I still, I am actually a fan of using soldering irons. Kasi mahilig ako magbuting-ting ng mga gamit ko. So, pag may mga nasira na wires, say for example, yan, yung mga wires, sa mga kurye-kuryente, gustong-gusto ko siyang ginagalaw. Yan. So, un- until ngayon, ginagamit ko pa rin siya. And, and for me, okay naman. Wala naman problema, di ba? Basta alam mo yung ginagawa mo. We also have here the flux, or what we call the soldering paste. It removes the oxide film from the surface of metals to be soldered. Wire is a long piece, long thin piece of material or metal that is used to fasten things or to carry electrical current and power or signals from one place to another. Wire stripper, on the other hand, is a small hand elect- handheld device used to strip the electrical insulation from those electric wires. And we also have here the PCB. Ito, yung printed circuit board. Uh, naabutan ko rin to eh. Yung PCB, it's a board that connects various points together. It has layers of copper laminated onto sheet layers of a non-conductive substrate. Ang PCB kasi, the printed circuit boards, ito yung ginagamit din namin dati for robotics. Uh, ngayon, breadboard na ngayon. Diba? Ilalagay nyo na lang. Unlike before, we are soldering them one by one. Yan. And there are some particular uses and applications for a soldering iron. Number one, of course, soldering in the roofing trades. Yan. Na-try nyo na pagka sa mga roofing trades natin or the roofers. Roofers use those solder to fuse galvanized metal for flashing. They also use it to fuse components of copper roofs, for example, because accuracy is less important than it in other trades as well. Roofing and soldering irons have broad tips that heat up quickly and the ability to retain heat in windy conditions. Now, uh, learning how to put objects together is actually a skill. Remember that. Uh, it's also quite important in, in robotics. Especially, uh, ito kasi pinag-aaralan natin. Introduction pa lang to. Introduction to robotics, Arduino. Diba? Pero if you are really planning to build your own robot or if you have a project like a proposed project na talagang full blast robotics, definitely solder 
or soldering is actually one of the skills that you might want to learn. Aside from the robotics, okay, soldering can also be applied in our daily lives. Because, of course, di ba? Sa accuracy na rin ito. Uh, the fact, because of also the fact that it won't ignite materials around the joint being soldered. Yun yung kagandahan nun, di ba? Pag nag-solder ka, hindi naman nasusunog or hindi naman talagang umaapoy, di ba? A soldering iron has more applications than a torch itself. Yan. Another use and application is for soldering tools for circuit boards. Okay. Ito. Solder guarantees contact between two wires to establish electrical continuity. In addition, the solder locks the wiring down to the circuit board because solder joints are typically small. And it's common, it's actually common to use a soldering pencil hooked up to a power station that allows the user to control the temperature. May mga ganun, pero ako kasi ang ginagamit ko yung pag sinaksak mo, umiinit na. May mga iba na nakakontrol mo na yung mga temperature mo. Especially, importante yan kapag ka mga sa circuit boards sa talaga ginagawa mo. Ito, for electricians. Of course, soldering is, of course, uh, it's also a use and application, di ba? Para sa mga electrician. Uh, electricians offer often use solder to splice wires when doing residential or commercial wiring. Alam naman na, alam na, na rin natin to, ha? We also have like soldering tools for home home projects. And the soldering pencils, guns and irons that are adequate for home use are made in abundance. Most are heated electrically and have tips that can be used with a propane torch as well. Mga home projects naman 'yan. Ba? Meron din tayong for jewelry trades and uh, jewelers. It jewelers use soldering pens and soldering irons with interchangeable tips and they also use accurate torches that burn propane or butane. And meron din tayo for auto repair. Solder isn't strong enough to make engine repair but it's used to fill irregular cavities, smooth rough surfaces as well and tighten joints. Uh parang ano 'yun eh, kung nakakita na kayo ng mga nag, uh, 'di ba? yung mga nagsasolder sa loob. Yung mga maliliit lang kasi ito eh. Iba na kapag ka malalaki, syempre. Diba? Ayan. So, let's try to describe the the following materials that is being shown here. Madali lang naman to. This is what we call the desoldering pump. This is the desoldering wire. Hindi makita. Hindi siya makita dito. Anyways, yeah. We also have here the printed circuit board. Ito, the soldering wire. We also have here the soldering paste, this one. We also have the soldering iron and the wire stripper. Ito, wire stripper. <laughs> diba? Next. Diba, syempre, tapos na, module 1 lang naman yung introduction. Yan. Now for lesson 2, which is actually the soldering iron, let's actually talk about how to use the soldering iron. Of course, there are some practice, there are some particular steps and or safety precautions that we have to follow. We will also be demonstrating how to use a soldering iron and of course, identify the types of wires. So, uh, if you have some time later on, I want you I want you guys to watch this video na i-sasan ko dito sa link natin. Take note of the important details in the video then answer the questions. This is only like a basic the the basic soldering video Tut video lang so i have posted the link you might probably watch that want to watch that later on para at least may idea kayo ano nga ba ang solder para dun sa mga wala pang idea kung paano yun nangyayari no yan so ano nga ba yung mga materials na ginagamit ano nga ba yung why is thinning the tip of the solder iron is important what safety precaution you think is important when soldering so with that being said, let's talk about what we call the wire. Wire is a long, thin piece of metal that is used to fasten things or to carry electric current, power, or signals from one place to another. So we have here the stranded. We also have here the solid wires. Itong stranded ang typical eh. Ba? Now for some safety precautions in soldering, make sure, again, ato, ah, do not play with the soldering iron. Wag na wag po. Be very careful while handling the soldering iron and the soldering lead. Use a medical mask to cover your nose and mouth while using it. Make sure to place the hot soldering iron in a soldering stand or in a flat surface. 
Do not inhale the melted lead or the smoke. Do not touch the tip of the soldering iron or melted lead. Clean the tip of the soldering iron before reusing it. Of course, ano lang naman to, reminders lang naman to. Pero syempre, since malalaki tayo, aware na, hindi naman, alam na, alam yun naman na dapat to, di ba? Without even reading the following safety precautions in soldering. Now, here are some examples of how the joint should look in common problems. So we have here the cold joints with inefficient, insufficient wetting pad, pagkulang, yan di ba? Ganyan na maging itsura niyan. The, we also have ito, We also have insufficient wetting, the pin and the pad. Ito, bawal ito. Hindi rin pwede ito. And insufficient wet. Pag ito, okay lang. And pag sumobra, ganyan ang itsura. Yung sakto lang ganito. Mahirap i-achieve tong saktong ganito. Ito, tong parang pa-cone shape na to in, in physical solder environment. Mahirap siya. Uh, kailangan stable yung kamay mo. Kasi pag nanginginig ka, medyo, medyo GG ka sa part na yun, di ba? So, importante na, ano, importante na stable yung kamay mo. Yan, pag sumobra kasi, ganyan ang itsura. And makalat, sobrang makalat siya. So, let's try to follow the steps in soldering a wire. Number one, we have to, you have to trim the wire. Remove the insulator of the wire using the pliers. Ito. Diba? Ito, pagka gugupit kayo, pasayad lagi. Diba? Pasayad lagi ang paggupit nito, hindi pa straight. Paside para makuha nyo to. Itong part na to. Uh, my very first solder project na na-experience ko is LED. Yung mga RGB strip lights dati. Di ba? Alam nyo yun, di ba? Yung mga kinakabit sa table. Mga ganon. So, natuto akong magbuting-ting ng ganon. Yung pinakauna, noon-noon pa naman yun. Yan. Number two, ten your wires. Melt some solder into the filaments with your soldering iron. Just like this one. So, we have a bare wire and a tin wire. The pre-solder. Now, apply the lead. Melt the lead to coat the end of the wire. Just like that. And, mainit to ha. Ito, mainit to. May nakita akong meme. Hinahawakan niya dito eh. Sa may mismong bakal. <laughs> Mga ganun, di ba? Number four, connect a soldered wire together. Reapply the soldering iron and the solder and solder the wires to each other. Just like that. Uh, it's actually in the video, so you might want to watch the video as well. Four minutes lang naman yan. It doesn't hurt that much. Yan. Ba? Easy? Pero syempre, hindi natin to gagawin physically. Kasi, <clears throat> online class lang naman tayo. And, definitely, we have our Arduino. Diba? Since we have our Arduino, everything is provided. That's a good thing about that. Now, The lesson 3 here, the soldering wires to the printed circuit board, yung PCB natin na pinakita ko sa inyo kanina. Ito. It's actually the printed wiring boards. This is how the PCB looks like before. Ngayon kasi breadboard na, ilalagay na lang natin yung pins, ipapasok na lang natin. No sweat. Unlike before, talagang kailangan mo siyang i-solder. Parang ganyan, di ba? Mamaya, papakita ko sa inyo yan. Uh, Other term for this one is a printed wiring cards that mechanically supports and electrically connects electronic components using conductive tracks, pads, and other features etched from one or more sheet layers of copper, laminated onto and or between the sheet of the layers of a non-conductive substrate. So, a wire is connected to a PCB through the soldering. So, pag may wire ka dito, lulusot mo dyan, pero you have to solder that one, which may be part of the repairing or modifying the board. So, imagine, no? Paano kung ang Arduino natin ganito pa rin? Nagsosolder pa rin tayo. Just like breadboard, may proper, ano rin yan, may proper uh, pattern din yan na susundan. Uh, sa first try niya is yung old phone. Oh, yung nakata- Oo nga, no? Sa mga phone, oo. Kaso sobrang liit kasi ng phone, kaya kailangan yung pang-solder mo, yung talagang, ano, and stable dapat yung kamay mo sa pagsasolder, di ba? Uh, meanwhile, thinning the tip of the soldering iron should be done to make the heat from the tip transfer faster and thereby making the solder, the soldering easier. So parang ganyan, di ba? So parang sa breadboard natin, you know, may pattern, ibig sabihin na ito, these are all connected These parts are all connected. Itong tatlong to, connected yan. Itong tatlo, connected itong mga 
vertical and horizontal parts na yan. So, unlike sa breadboard natin, no, easy. <laughs> Hindi na natin kailangang isolder ito. Uh, pag beginner kayo, medyo magiging ang tendency niyan, medyo madumi. Yan ito ang itsura. Uh, that's the disadvantage naman of soldering. Kasi once na nagkamali ka, there are some cases na you are soldering a specific part of your PCB or the PC board natin. Nangyayari, nasasolder mo rin to yung katabi niya. Sabihin, of course, the electric current that is flowing on this one might flow as well on this part. So, magtataka ka ngayon kung bakit either umusok yung project mo or mali yung naging output mo. Nangyayari po talaga yan. So, be very careful po when using soldering iron. Yan. ba? Diba? So, adding lead to the PCB. Solder a lead in a PCB. Soldering a wire into a PCB. Yan. Parang breadboard talaga siya Pero buti na lang, hindi nyo na inabutan to. Kasi, pang ano to eh, pang electrical engineering classes. Pagka nag-enroll kayo sa electrical engineering, doon, gagawin nyo talaga to. Ayan o. Uh, ito, natry ko rin to sa mga switches. Sa mga kuryente natin. Especially for switches. ba diba? Ayan lang, yung ikakabit mo yung sa kuryente, tapos ilalagay mo sa, sa ano ulit. Ang saya, ang saya na itong kawin. But for as long as you know the concept between anode and cathode, no? positive and the negative, ano yung ground, ano yung, ano yung hindi, di ba? Oh, you're good to go. Most of our electrical components at home lang naman, they, they only have negative and positive. The, the, the simple concept is that positive is always connected to the positive. Yan. And, Of course, negative is negative. Diba? Para maging maayos. Yeah, 60-40 ratio lead when soldering. Yeah, actually, huwag masyadong madami, huwag din masyadong kakunti. Yung tama lang. Uh, nung bago ako dito, ano, talagang may inis ako kasi syempre, pag hindi ka marunong, diba? mag, mag, magdudumi talaga yan, tapos nakaka-frustrate kasi ang bilis maubos ng lead. Pagka hindi ka marunong. Kasi pagka uminit, babagsak. Dali siyang bumagsak. Kaya kung mali yung pinagbagsakan, <laughs> ulitin mo ulit. Diba? So, soldering wires. Mag-custom build ng keyboard? Yes, yes, oo. Ganto. <laughs> Mga ano rin, no? Mga ganto-ganto rin pala yun, oo. Mga custom build sa keyboard natin. O nga, no? Nasaan pa yung custom build ng keyboard ko niya? Binenta ko na pala. I stick to the... The, the, meron ako dating kasing keyboard na 60% lang pero nagstick ako sa hand, sa full keyboard because I need the numpads you know for entering grades kaya hindi, hindi para sa akin ang 60% na keyboards pero yan na naging bisyo ko rin yan ang cost, mag custom ng keyboard kung an- anong binibili ko dati na ano ano eh why nagstick lang ako sa white so goods na ako dun okay So, that's actually the lesson 3 of our module 5. And I think that's only the basics of like an introduction to how uh, soldering or soldering iron works. Now, let's proceed with the lesson 4, which is actually the main discussion of our module. Kasi babalik tayo dito sa Arduino. Diba? So, RGB module. We will be talking about what we call RGB modules. Naman. RGB modules natin. Our target outcomes here is for us to determine the code to produce color combinations with a different intensity using an RGB module. Recognize the three primary colors of light and of course calls and of course recall the meaning of LED. And no have a favorite color natin. Uh do, do you guys have like favorite colors? Ako ha nung nung uh magmula noon hanggang oh What is that? <laughs> Lakas na na. Wait lang ah. What is your favorite color? Ako personally, my favorite colors. Uh, number one is red. And, and of course, white. Yung dalawang yan. Ah, may blue, di ba? Kakaiba tayo ng preference eh. Pagka sa damit, I prefer wearing black or dark colors sa mga damit. Pero sa gamit, Uh, I love white colors. Ako dito sa bahay, puro white ang mga gamit ko. O nga, no, white nga. Pati phone ko, white. Pati mouse and keyboard ko, white. PC, PC chassis ko, white din. Yeah. 
Diba? So yan, so we all have our different preferences. So pag-uusapan natin, paano nga ba tayo, <laughs> mahirap na magdaba ng white, oo nga. <laughs> pag-uusapan natin, paano nga ba tayo gagawa ng, ng RGB, ng RGB color? So, so far we already know how to create or how to uh, create a schematic using the LED. Eh, pero ang LED kasi isang colors lang yun, di ba? Either red, either blue, either green. And hindi tayo pwedeng makapag-produce ng any colors like magenta, cyan, yung mga ganyan na colors, di ba? Like ngayon, we will now learn what we call the RGB module in Arduino. Di ba? Uh, FYI din, kapag, depende kasi sa mismong color mo, kung ano ang mag reflect sa personality mo. Di ba? According here, according here to what we call the color psychology, just like in graphic designing and every and every artworks as well, of course, they they mean something. Yeah. If you love red, you are like more energetic, passionate, and determined. If you are into blue, you are intuitive, you prefer tranquility, and you are a trust, trustworthy person. So, marami. You, you may want to you might want to read about the color psychology. Pero hindi natin pag-uusapan yan. Let us talk about what we call the RGB module. Ang RGB module naman, it's actually a module. When I say module in Arduino, I'm referring to the components. Alright? RGB module uses an RGB, the red, green, and blue, LED to emit various colors and effects in their projects. RGB color spaces or color space or RGB color system constructs all the colors from the combination of the red, green, and blue colors. So, hindi lang tayo mag-focus sa red, sa green, and the blue. This time, by combining some parts of our RGB LEDs, makakakreate tayo ng iba't ibang uh, colors natin. So, we will be using here what we call the RGB codes. So, I I think I introduced the RGB codes in your empowerment technologies, di ba? Yung, ano natin, yung color.adobe.com natin, yung combination ng color wheels natin. So, we can, we know how to use or how to uh, get the RGB values of the colors that we want to place. Say, for example, di ba? Uh, gagawin din natin yan today, syempre. The RGB LED can emit different colors by simply mixing the three basic colors, red, green, and blue. Itong nakikita nyo dito, di ba? Itong RGB uh, LED natin. Punta tayo. Let's open our Tinkercad. RGB in Tinkercad is actually very easy. Create tayo ng bagong design. Ay, bakit mali? <laughs> 3D ang nagawa ko. Punta tayo sa circuits. Ayan. So, let's create a new circuit here. Let me show you how RGB LED looks like. So, it looks something like this. Diba? So, ganyan lang yan siya. So, we have here four different wirings. We have the red. We have the cathode, which is actually the negative. Okay? We have the blue and we have the green. Huwag kayong malita dito sa module natin kasi medyo baliktad lang ang orientation nitong si Tech Factors. Hindi ko rin alam kung bakit. Pero, sundan na lang natin to, itong mga nakalagay dito. So, we have cathode. Cathode is for negative. Diba? So, kukonect natin, natin to later on sa negative. Yan. The RGB, again, it can emit different colors by mixing the three basic colors. So, we have red, green, blue. And, depende sa kanila, mag, ano yan, magpapakita kung ano yung color na gusto natin. And uh, the three primary primary colors, red, green, and blue, can be mixed and composed all kinds of colors by brightness. So you can actually make an RGB LED emit colorful light by controlling the circuit. The intensity of the light produced by each LED can be controlled by adjusting the value of intensity for each color. By mixing or adjusting the intensity, these primary colors of light, almost all colors, can be produced. Now, uh, this is only basic. Okay, did you know that using RGB, that using the RGB uh, module here, you can simply produce this. Pakita ko lang ha, yung RGB natin. You can produce this one by just simply using the digital rights. Ito, itong digital right natin na nakikita natin dito. Diba? Ibig sabihin, pag, pag digital right, yan, if you would like to produce a red color, Meaning, madali lang naman ito. Uh, Siyempre, 
i-open mo, i-open mo si red pin mo, i-low mo si green, i-low mo din si blue. As simple as that. Pag gusto mo ng green, i-open mo si green, i-low mo pareho. So, gawin natin yan dito, kunwari. Uh, by setting this up, it's very easy, di ba? The setup is very easy. Let's get here an Arduino board. Yan. As ito, ilagay natin somewhere dito. Okay. So, for example, ito, red. Let's connect that in pin number 9, for example. For the sake of this, lagay tayo dito ng color coding lang natin yan. The blue is, of course, dito. Lagay natin yan kay 10. Connect natin. Gawin natin blue. And the green, lagay natin yan ng 11. Dito kay 11. Green. Tapos, kay cathode, definitely, si ground yan. Punta natin yan dito kay ground. But, there is still a missing piece to this one. We forgot to add a resistor. Ba? So, maglagay tayo ng resistor dyan. Yan yun lang. Actually, dito dapat to eh. Ayan. Alalagyan lang natin ng resistor yung tatlo ah, yung red, green, and blue na yan. Oops. Yun, dito. Ayan, tapos ito, connect natin dito. So, good. Diba? That's actually the, the simplest way on how we connect or how we set up our RGB module. Napakadali. And the good thing about this one, since nilagay natin siya sa digital pin, pwedeng-pwede kasi natin siyang iset up lang as digital, right? Ayan o. So, kapag ka red ang gusto mo, mag open si red. Pag si green, i-open mo si green. Pag ka blue, i-open mo si blue. Pag ka yellow, pag ka yellow naman, combination ng red and green. Pag si purple, combination ng red and blue. Pag si cyan, combination ng green and blue. Pag si white, combination ng lahat. Ma, lahat, combination ng lahat yan. Now, for example, gusto mong mag, gusto mong ikiin or ilagay si each color mo using your RGB colors or RGB module. And about dito, for the red, you would like to code in the red color. Pwede, pwede kasi tayong pumunta sa my color.adobe.com natin and just simply check by simply checking the RGB values of each color that we want. Pwede, pwede na natin makuha yung value nila. Ito. Oh. So, we have here 230, we have here 6, we have here 90. Diba? Pero, uh, para mas maganda yung ano natin, para mas maganda yung 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 mismong program natin, we can just simply, you know, we can just simply program this one in such a way na gusto natin na eksaktong kulay. Diba? By using this code here, code natin ulit to, no? Pakita ko sa inyo kung kung paano siya i-code ng maayos para mas ma-gets natin paano siya gumagana. Ba? Let me explain how the code works one by one. So, of course, first of all, you will be setting or you will be declaring the three different variables in which kung saan mo nilagay yung pin ni red, blue, and green. So, my red here is in 9, my blue is in 10, my green is in 11. Ayan, di ba? So, we, we have that. Now, inside the setup, since output yan, let's simply put here LED red, tapos output. As simple as that. And so, LED red... LED blue, LED green. Now, in this case, say for example, gusto mo nang pailawin, kanina ba digital right yung pinakita natin, pero this is actually not really efficient. Now, um, in, in, for the sake of this class, we can actually use what we call the RGB codes for, in order for us to enter a specific code sa loob ng, ano natin, sa loob ng program natin. 
Now, inside the loop, we will be calling here a method. Yan. RGB color. Atong method na to, this will now serve as a separate method. Diba? Alam naman natin kung ano ang method, no? We have here a parameter. Ang parameter nito is the following. We have here the light value. Yan. We have here the green value or blue value. Blue light value. And we have here the RGB pala. Green pala dapat ito. Green light value. And we have the blue light value. So, we have here the following parameter. So, tatlong integer yan. So, ngayon, kung meron siyang tatlong integer dito, of, of course, lalagay natin dito yung value na gusto natin. So, 0, 0. This will now produce an output of red. So, this simply means that you are passing the following values to this method and 255 will get the value of 255 and will be passed down to the red light value uh, variable dito. Kay zero, dito rin. Okay? So, dito, we will now be using what we call analog write. Hindi digital write na nagamitin natin. Bakit nga ba analog write? Because we would like to actually set the specific Okay? The specific value of our LED. Kung baga, ang, ang, di ba, ang digital highs and lows lang. Ones and zeros lang siya. Pag analog, specific na siya. Although, sinaksak natin siya sa digital. Di ba? Pwede naman yun. Red, green, and blue. So, let's try to let's try to put this in in our blocks. And let's try to simulate. Ayun, di ba? So, nagkaroon siya ng red colors. Di ba? So, yun yung red color natin. Yun yung kagandahan niyan. Di ba? Now, maybe you're wondering, paano kung binago ko to, ginawa kong lagpas like 256. Ito kayo mangyayari, no? Pag 256. It will still run, however, there is no color that is being produced. Bakit nga ba? It's because of the fact that the colors are only from 0 to 255. So, from 0 to 255 lang yan. Hindi pwedeng mag-iba. ba? Yung value nyan. So, paano kung gusto nating like, punta tayo dito sa color wheel natin, gusto nating i-key in itong exactong value ng gantong kulay. Gusto natin. ba? So, we can just simply copy the RGB codes. So, 235 oh. 135, we have 195, 33. 135, 33. Ayun. Oops. Hindi siya nag-yellow, no? 195 pala dapat. 195, 33. Ayan, ganun lang siya. You got the idea, di ba? So, kung gusto nyo yung patinig siya nag -aano. Kung gusto nyo mag-change yung ano natin, yung mga RGB values natin. Try ko nga yung ibang kulay dito. Aside sa 255. 255, 0, 0. Yan. Uh, let's put a delay. 1,000. Meaning 1 millisecond. Red light, green light. Ah, red. Okay. Red, blue, green. So, palitan natin ito. Gawin natin blue. So, this one is like green dapat. 0, 255, 0. Man, mag-change mag siya ng color from from red to green, supposedly. Oops, dito yan. Right. So, void RGB, red light value, the blue light value. And the blue light value here. Diba? So, pwede, pwede po kasi tayong maglagay ng mga... But apparently, hindi na gumagana. <laughs> Weirdo talaga. Diba? Pwede, pwede tayong maglagay ng mga codes dito. 
Ayan, pwede, pwede tayo maglagay ng codes dito sa loob ng ng project natin. So, i-make sure lang natin ha. So, kung si red ay na kay, na kay 9, si blue ay na kay 10, tapos si green na kay 10, dapat sakto yan lagi. Ayan. Okay? So, you got the idea of RGB codes. Pwede, pwede nyo naman itong itry on your own para mas maintindihan natin kung paano siya gumagana totally. Okay? Mamaya, magpapakita ako sa inyo ng iba pang sample. Kung baga, di ba, imagine a remote in your Arduino. It's like this, di ba? So, we can control the remote or the colors by simply pressing the remote. Saka natin pag-aaralan yung pag-press ng remote dito. Pero for now, of course, we can actually change the color. You might want to key in the following codes here as well. Alright? So, next. Ayan. Try natin tong ano natin dito. Ito. Using the RGB LED. Ayan. Use these following RGB codes to program the microcontroller to see what color that was programmed. So, that kung, kung gusto nyo itry ito, pwede naman, di ba? So, by just simply keying in the following, like 247. Pero ang weird, bakit di siya gumagana ngayon? 143. And... Ayun na okay naman. Minumulto na naman ako. Laging red. <laughs> Hindi dapat. Hindi dapat yan laging red, no? May ano lang to. May problema lang to sa circuit ko. Okay? So, basically, if you enter the following, so you have here 247, you have 232, you have your 143. Try nyo lang yan on your own. Uh, kakaroon kayo ng light yellow. Ito, meron ako dito. Ano eh. Same code to. Ayun, ito. Ayun. Di ba? So, nag-change na yung color-color niya. Hindi ko magets bakit. Bakit mali yung kanina? Hindi magpakita ng maayos. Ito, magpapakita naman. Ayan. Di ba? So, red, green, blue. So, if you enter the following, pwede pwede na siyang mag-change. Alright, got it? So that is for the RGB module. Once again, you only, you just simply need to follow the, itong mga pins natin, red, the blue, the green, and the cathode. And next part is actually for us to mix the colors using RGB module. Pag sabihin, pag imimix na natin sila, di ba? Different codes can be used to produce random colors from the RGB module. Variations in intensity of the three colors produce different range of colors as well. The value of intensity of colors for each LED ranges from 0 to 255. And by, by adjusting the value for each color using the analog write function in programming. Pag sinabi kasi natin digital write, once again, we are talking about ones and zeros only. So for example, dun sa blinking LED natin, di ba kung natatandaan yun, ang blinking LED natin, we are only using highs and lows for us to turn on and turn off the LED bulb. And this time, we are using analog right. Kapag ka analog right kasi, we are now setting a specific value to the RGB codes itself or to the code itself na ginagawa natin. And this is actually a good way for us to like, uh, use the analog light for yan, RGB lighting. Dito, sa mga PC natin, di ba, yung mga mahilig sa RGB fans natin, uh, hindi lang siya basta highs and lows. Nagpo-produce tayo ng, ng mga RGB lighting natin. Okay? So, by mixing and adjusting the intensity of green, red, green and blue light, different colors can be produced through the RGB module. And our knowledge in producing different colors with different intensities can be used in lighting and can be beneficial to our lives as well. So, basahin nyo na lang yan. We can now create here a program. We let's Let me show you how to create a code that will display random colors for every 30 seconds with 10 repetition. Yan, medyo, medyo challenging siya, no? Kasi magpo-produce tayo dito ng napaka-random na kulay with like for every 30 seconds and with 10 different repetition. Paano kaya natin gagawin yan? No? Uh, Siyempre, gagamit tayo na tinatawag natin na analog right. Pakita ko lang. Gawa tayo ulit ng panibagong circuit natin. Tanggaling ko na to. 
siya yung nag abnormal yan. Ito. Ito tayo. The, I, I'll, I'll show you ha, how to how to make this one. Yan. Lagay mo na kita dyan. Okay. So first of all, let's place here our yan. Tapos Arduino natin. Siyempre. And we should have our RGB. LED RGB. Same din. 9, 10, 11 natin i-connect. No? So, i-connect ko muna itong si, si resistors natin. Resistor. 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 Sa mismong Arduino kit, makikita nyo doon kung ano ang positive, ano yung negative. No? Para hindi kayo malito. Pag, kapag ka nakita nyo yung physical kit natin. Ayan. So, lagay natin ito. Gawin natin black. This one is red. So, let's make this red. Let's put red in, of course, dito kay ito. Si blue, lagay natin si blue kay, kay 10. Tama na, kay 10. I hope na susundan nyo yung ginagawa ko, no? Para may idea kayo. We also have here green. Okay. So, we're good. Pasot ko lang ito ng konti para makita nyo. Okay. Yan, para maayos naman. So, we will now code this one. Gagawin natin, mag-change tayo ng, or gagawa tayo ng code that will display random colors. So, kanina, naglagay tayo dito ng mga codes, di ba, na kung saan tawag dito. Specific codes yung nilalagay natin. The question here is that, how are we going to output or produce a color, a random color for this one? So, let's open the Arduino code. Set up ko lang si Ayan. Tapos si loop natin. Okay. For, before the setup, of course, I would like to create here a variable. Lagay natin kay R pin, which is 9. Ilagay din natin si green pin, which is 10. Lagay natin si B pin equals 11. And let's, let's double check. Is 9 kay red? Is blue kay 10, is green kay 11. If yes, produce tayo dito. Okay. Now, let us go ahead and lagay tayo dito ng R value. Atong R value na to, let's put here an initial value of 0 beforehand. So, red, green, blue. Now, this will actually serve as the container for the random values that we would like to get. Okay? So, gagamitin natin itong tatlong variable na to para mapagstoran ng mga random values natin. Okay? So, inside the setup, we have here pin mode, R pin, output, and we have here green pin, diba? the G pin, and we also have here the B pin, the blue pin. That's for the setup, and that's as is. Now, for this one, sa loop natin, maglulup yan, di ba? Maglulup ng maglulup ng maglulup. Okay. Now, we will be having here a, a three analog write for our pin. Okay. And our pin, for G pin, and for B pin. So, tatlo ang analog write natin. Now, Saan natin ilalagay? Paano nga ba mag-generate ng random value sa C++? Just like Java, yan, meron tayong rval is equal to, gagamitin natin si random na method. Random method is actually the same function as method random in Java. It's the same. So, in C++, ganyan lang, random. Ano yung ilalagay natin sa loob ni random? the random values will actually be from 0 up to 255. Nakuha ba natin? So, yung random values will be from range from 0 to 255 only. So, 
Yan yung kay Arval, kay Gval, and Pval. So, 255. Ngayon, saan natin ilalagay itong value ni Arval natin? Ilalagay natin yan kay analog write natin. So, Arval. Ibig sabihin, we will try to write the value of whatever number na na-produce na ito. Okay? Whatever value na na-produce na ito. So, we have here Arval. We have here Gval. And we have here like Bval. Okay? So, I think okay na yan, no? Kung every 30 seconds yan, ibig sabihin matagal. Uh, 30,000 ang delay natin. Pero, gawin lang nating mabilis lang. Yan, gawin lang nating 500 milliseconds para half, half a second lang. 0.5 mili, 500 milliseconds. Half a second. Uh, 10 repetition. Madali lang din tong 10 repetition na to. Pwede kasi natin tong ilagay dito instead na sa loop. Tapos, tatlong beses kang may, sampung beses kang may ganyan. ba diba? Pero, for the sake of this class, lagay na lang natin dito sa loop para makita natin. Nag-change siya every now and then. Okay. So, simple as that. Let's try to check and see. Yun, may, may mali daw ako dito. Pin-moded. <laughs> Yan. Sinasabi niya naman kung anong mali niya. Pin-moded. Ayun. Nag-change ba yung colors? Yes. Di ba? Uh, for those RGB lovers with remote, may kita natin yan usually dito sa strobe. Diba? Nag yung, ay, tama ba? Strobe ba? Or flash? Tingnan ko nga. Ah, o nga, sa flash. Sa flash. The part. Ayan, diba? So, nag-change siya ng kulay. <laughs> Goods. Nakuha ba natin to? Nakuha natin? So, copy natin yung code, no? Para at least meron kayong sample code or like the basic code na ano natin. And we will try to solve another problem as well. Okay. How about spectrum? Ang spectrum kasi is actually fading. ba? Diba? Nag-fade naman yung mismong codes mo. Or yung ilaw, I mean. Nag-fade siya. So we will try to recreate this one. Let's try to create a an Arduino schematics with a code kung saan mag-change naman yung spectrum ng code natin. Pag sinabi kasi nating spectrum, this time, meron kang nag-change yung value mo, pero nag-fade na siya. Okay? So, we will still be using the same schematics para hindi tayo mahirapan. Ito. Same schematics. Pero this time, we will try to change the code. So, puri ko na to. Puruin ka na to. nag lang siya na nag-ganyan. Okay? So, first, of course, we will try to uh, declare the following variables. This time, gawin natin red pin para mas ma-gets natin agad, no? Nine. Oops. We have here in red pin. We have here blue underscore pin, which is in ten. We also have here Green, and green pin is equal to eleven, and we have here int display underscore time, which simply serves as the delay, de ba? Yeah. Kami nating ten milliseconds. So sa loob ni setup pin mode red underscore pin output. You should know this by now. Red You have here blue. You have here green as well. Yeah. So, uh, since we are done with the setup, let's go here sa my loop. Inside the loop, I will sh I will now call the method show spectrum. Okay? So, this will actually serve as a method for me to call sa loob ni loop natin. Anong gagawin ba ni show spectrum? This will simply get the values, okay, of our RGB and will now try to print the RGB ng random. Or kahit hindi random, mamaya natin gagawin yan. So, paulit-ulit yan. ba? Diba? So, we have here void show spectrum. Wala naman siyang, wala tayong ilalagay na value dyan. 
Now, let's declare a variable x. Null. Lagay natin null. Create here a for loop. This will now call another method. Okay. Sa so, loob nito is and 768. Saan ko nga ba kinuha 768? This is actually the uh, if you add 256. Tapos nag nag ano ka pa, nag advance ka pa na nag advance. Marireach natin si 768 as well. Okay? So Pwede natin i-change yan mamaya kung ano ang mangyayari. So, gusto ko hanggang 768 lang yung value na gusto ko. So, we have here show RGB. Ayan, tatawagin natin ulit to. I will be calling the RGB call RGB spectrum with our new value of X. So, naglulup yan eh. Naglulup yan. Nag, nag fade kasi yan eh. Show RGB and let's try to put here a delay. Kung ano man yung nilagay natin delay ganina. So, display underscore time. So, next, since we already have here the show RGB, pakita natin si show RGB. Ngayon. Panibagong method na to, ha? Let's declare the intensity, the light in intensity. We have here red intensity we have here blue intensity. We have here green intensity as well. Ayan. Now, if uh, if the caller actually reach a value that is less than or equal to 255, ayan, which is actually the zone number one of our caller, magbibago yan, mag-iikot ng iikot yan, definitely, Yung red intensity natin, red intensity is now equal to the 255 minus the color value. Kung ano man yung nagpakita. Kukunin natin ngayon si intensity ni green as value ni color. Okay? And kukunin natin ngayon yung value ni blue intensity as zero. So, off natin yan. So, magiging ano to eh. Magiging depende kung ano yung lalabas dito ngayon. Okay? So, blue intensity, 0. Next, we have here another else if, which is actually for the second zone. If the color reaches a value that is less than or equal to 511, okay, 511 naman ngayon, of course, something will happen. The red intensity will be turned off, and it will be turned off. The green intensity will now uh, get the value of 255 minus the color minus 256 to produce an exact color na nasa loob pa rin ng spectrum sa green intensity yan. Ha? 255 minus color minus 256 and the blue intensity will now get the color minus 256 as well. And lastly, for the zone number 3, pangatlong kulay niya, we have here red intensity, which will now serve as minus 512. And the green intensity, which is 0. Blue intensity is equal to 255 minus color minus 256 or 512. Yung, yung pinakadulo niya na. Okay? So, I guess we're good with this. Takalin ko na tong comment. Yung blue nag-zero, yung red nag-zero, and yung nag-green nag-zero. Color, minus 5, 12, 2, 5, 5, minus color, minus 5, 12. Okay. Gets. Next. Kunin natin ngayon. This is actually the part where we will be writing or papailawin na natin with the red intensity value. Ayan. So, red, blue pin, blue intensity, green pin, green intensity. Copy natin yan. Lagay natin yan dito. Okay, code natin. And let's see what will happen. Let's actually try to 
check ano nga ba yung mali ko. Ayun. Diba? So, kung napansin nyo, just using this code na pre-introduce natin, nagkakaroon siya ngayon ng spectrum. So, nag-change yung color spectrum niya from one color to another randomly. Pero hindi tayo gumamit ng random na method. Nag-set lang tayo ng value na 768 and sinet natin yan dito sa may if-else statements natin. Diba? So, uh, I suggest you might want to save the code kanina yung color code natin because kapag nan, nandito na tayo sa may remote natin, meron kayong activity na like ano lang, basic activity lang na isa-set nyo na yung mga kulay dito. Uh, one one button there is actually the the fade. Yan yung fade and smooth button. ba diba? Saka siya magagaganyan. Question so far? None? Okay, so FYI, for your performance check, you'll be creating an, a program, uh, an Arduino sketch, that will actually change the color of the RGB LED. Pero this time, using three different buttons. Ito ang challenge dito. Eh. Each button corresponds to red, green, and blue. Pero you have to add a functionality where